morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the show. It is Wednesday, March 27th. Hope all of you are having a great start to your hump day. You know, it's 10 o'clock. We get started every day at this time. We have a lot to talk about today. We have a live fighter coming on the show. We got updates to P. Diddy, stuff with Ryan Garcia. Obviously, the whole massive issue with the bridge incident, some changes to the NFL, and also more. But live right now, as we get started, we're going to bring on a fighter on the show and talk about how Bare Knuckle continues to grow. Bare Knuckle, UFC, MMA, people are starting to get a little more interested in it. A lot of people thought it was barbaric and crazy, but today we have a live guest on the show, and we're going to bring him in for the first time. His name is Chris Sorrow, live interview, one of the main guys that got started back in Bare Knuckle, a guy that's making major moves now and also has his own gym, which is going to dial us into. We're excited to have him on the show right now. And welcome to the show for the first time, Chris. Sorrow, buddy, so good to have you on here. Dude, I love that gym background. Like, I I saw it from on the show. I'm like, that is legit, man. It's a traditional boxing gym, for sure. You, it's uh, If you went back in time 100 years, you'd find a gym just like this, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So tell us, where, where are you based at now? You, I talked to you for a second. You said, hey, you were down this way, and then you went back up to Maine. What's going on? Yeah, so I just moved back to Maine. I've been in Miami for uh, the majority of my career, and uh, I spent three years in Miami. I was in Puerto Rico. When I first signed with BKFC, I I uh, hopped it down to Puerto Rico uh, with my, my friend Elvin Burrito, former champ, BKFC champ, and I went down there just to live in the jungle and completely changed my life over into a bare knuckle machine down there you have nothing but focus you know you're in the jungle there's nothing to do there's no there's no distraction down there so year and a half there three years in south beach uh at south beach boxing fifth street gym and now i'm up here in ellsworth I Maine. Saw that. My, my hometown. yeah i saw that one so so tell us this. so obviously we've been having bare knuckle fighters on here we'll love getting to meet people new people a lot of my following and fan base i have from before back in the day we had nfl nba a lot of subscribers on here on the channel and now BKFC, I've been having fighters on here. I think it's it's special. It's something that people would say it's barbaric at first, right? Like when you go to UFC at first, that's barbaric. And then yeah. you see bare knuckle and you're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> what am I actually watching here, right? Like this yeah. is what you're seeing. A yeah. little bit of tape, you know, not much. And it's bare knuckle fighting. How did you get into this? Like what made you want to say, shit, I'm going for this? Yeah, so we have to have a home for us too. You know, uh, I started in MMA and boxing. That's my background. But what I found uh, almost, what, going on six years with BKFC is that a lot, like most all of us bare knuckle fighters have something in common, like where there, there's a screw loose or there's just something that a little off with us, but not in a bad way because we also have the biggest hearts. Sometimes the most passionate people, um, we're passionate in all areas. And so uh, when it comes to fighting, you know, passion can, can take many forms. We can look like monsters or barbaric, but, you know, bare knuckle fighters are some of the kindest people, most humble people you'll ever meet. You know, I know you've met a few of them already. And Yo, so you, um, said, you said exactly, and I don't want to cut you off. You, you said no. exactly what I've been hearing from people that are not involved in the sport. It, yep. It's so crazy because I have family member. Even my cousin told me, he goes, these guys are like super humble. Like I thought they'd come on here and be like, I'm knocking people the fuck out. I'm going crazy. I'm terrorizing shit. And before the fight, I know how you, at that point you're like, you're zoned in ready to fight your warrior. I want to talk about that. I got some cool clips in a second. People watching right now, tune in. I'm going to show some clips, some highlights, some knockouts of this guy's out there an animal. But Chris, I, I was told this, like, so even keel. Like, I, the guys on the show have the kindest hearts. And then sometimes it's like, I had the guy Stuby on the show. He goes, I grew up and I was, you know, they made fun of my sister because she was handicapped. And I had another guy grew up, I came in here, Rambo said he lost both of his parents to yeah. literally to AIDS, which was like, Dude, I'm not, I'm thinking to myself, this is, and then another guy's on the show the other day, and he said, look, his name was Brandon Meyer, and he goes, he just had another win over uh, a guy yep. here in Miami, right? And yep. um, only fames, right? Over yep. fames, to be fames. Then he goes, look, he goes, I was in jail for 10 years, yep. got out, and went back for three years for something today's day and age would be like, well, like a slap yep. on the wrist. So I'm just yep. saying, they come from some backgrounds, and, and it stirs up in you. What yeah. was it for you that was like, I got to do this? My, my brother, my best friend and brother, he's 
lining our walls right now every day. He passed away, um, and that was the most devastating thing in my life. We were, you know, two peas in the pod. And my whole, I've been competitive for 10 years, over 10 years, and in the sport, you know, of combat sports, 16. And all we did was talk about, you know, the day that I go pro, what weight, how, this and that. We It was just, wow. it was a pastime of ours. So when he passed away, you know, I, I remember standing there while they're lowering his casket. I'm standing there and I'm, I was just thinking, how am I going to make it through life? Because that was my, like, we, it was just us. You know, I didn't have a big circle of friends. It was just us. And uh, him passing away, like, suddenly, unexpectedly, I decided four days later, I signed my first pro contract. Dave Sullivan told me I needed a pro fight before I get signed in. I wanted to hurt somebody is what it was in the beginning because I was hurting. You know, that whole term, hurt people, hurt people. And um, I was hurting bad, and I wanted, I needed to get it out of me and um, in some way. You know, I, I, was, I wasn't I was right in the head for a while. This was six years ago. And so um, I took my first pro fight four days after watching him be lowered to his, his final resting place. And wow. I trained for that, my pro debut, like an animal. I moved myself into our – we had a warehouse that we shared, and we did all our projects in – and, um, you know, I, uh, when he passed away, it was called Lake Slane. That was like our little hideout, you know, we'd be fighting with our girls or, or like when we need the vent is just bros. And then I didn't like the feeling of it being tainted after he passed. So I moved in there, no electricity, no running water. And I, I mean, I would have to go to the friend's house down the street, you know, to take a shower. And, uh, I ended up having a buddy bring a fridge over like two weeks out from the fight. I was, I was it was primal you know every day i woke up <clears throat> wow it, it, and uh it's what got like lining up a fight is what got me through it's what fighting's always done for me i line up a fight i get a date and then i know i know i'm gonna come into this fight a dog and to do that i have to eat right sleep right take care of myself train and then by doing all those things, life falls into place. You know, you, your life is in order. It's the only thing that kept me in order. And yeah, this right here, you know, this, changed my life me, forever. Chris. This is my debut. He looked like he was a little worried, right? Yeah, rightfully so. He could I see mean, in my eyes. I, mean, I, I would be hit by this. I, you know, I'd be a little worried too. I mean, look at I this. I was on another level that night. I wasn't <laughs> losing. I wasn't this losing. This isn't even, you know, it's like you stung with something that was way deeper than just a regular knockout. It was like, if you would have even, I don't even think it was one even close to one of your toughest punches whatsoever. So it's like, you just gave him a little piece of what you had on the ring. Yeah. And this was something that he felt immediately. Like yeah. when, when he felt that it was like, all right, uh, there's bare knuckle fighters. And then there's me, right? Yeah. Like that's really how sad. I, I that's mean, what I'm seeing. Sad. You lost Walk us through this it. right now. What, yeah. what goes through your mind right here? All right, so seconds before this moment right here, I touched him with the jab, and I saw I cut him open. And I touched him again. I saw I cut him again. First time ever. I was like, well, what's my right hand going to do? Boom. Oh. Yeah. Put his orbital. Unfortunately, he lost. I mean, he, he lost that eye because of this. He's got one eye. Yeah. His it's eye sad. was lost? Yeah, it's dead. Yeah, it killed the vision in it completely. Orbital Are bone went serious? through. And yeah, man. That's the so dangers this jab of here that you're throwing, you said you cut him with the jab. Cut him yeah, with another so jab. Just with the jab. I... Cut. Cut. Just like yeah. that. Well, we're moving around. The beginning of this fight was only a minute long. In the beginning, I'm just, I'm placing, I'm feeling it out. And so I'm keeping my range. And then the second I, in my head, I go, all right, I'm going to put one on him. Boom. And I saw, like, instantly this big razor slash. And I was like, that was just a jab. Let me do it again. Boom. I hit him with three. And each one was a cut, a cut, a cut. And I was watching it and I'm going, shit. Then you see me right before this, I start, you see me hungry. Cause I go, if my jab does that, what's my right hand gonna do? Oh my God. And then God. the second that, you know, he he overcommitted, you know, I, I did a pull and right hand while moving back and he walked into it and I didn't even feel the punch. That's why I walked over him. You know, it looks mean, but I was like in shock. Like what just happened? And, so you, uh, so yeah. you're saying, you're saying this punch that you landed like the knockout punch completely said the eye is no longer out. I mean, it, obviously he was cut up, but after that, he not, went and got checked. The eye was gone. I'm proud of. It's just if. Yeah, 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 of course. 
to raise awareness of what we really put on the line. A lot of people don't realize when they're online talking trash to fighters, what we put on the line. I mean, that's the father, you know? He's a, he's a, he's a human being like the rest of us. He makes his living as an athlete. You know, I'm not I'm not happy or proud of that by any means, but that is the outcome of, of that situation, right? That's my debut. And that's when I'm walking out to that that cage, that ring, I know every time that goes through my head on uh, wow. the possibilities, what can really take place here. Yeah. So you so uh you know what? So humble of you again, and I and I know uh real feelings, obviously. But this hit and he what he just said, guys, you're watching this. He said he hit this man, the guy's a father, like he these people are fighting for their life, fighting for their lifestyle, fighting for, you know, their financial background to be able to pay put food on the table. And basically, like you said, he's not proud of the hurt and the guy. He's proud of the fight, obviously. But the hit here, that this knockout, boom, that you see, it's like, yeah, for, you're a champion. It feels good. You get that knockout. And you go back and he said, look, this guy's got to go home. And he's like, they put everything on the line. Right, Chris? Everything. Like, you're out there. And, and UFC, similar thing. Not the same, but similar Boxing, a lot more padding. You're not seeing guys really losing their 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 eyes, you know. But in bare knuckle, it's a dog eat dog world. It's a tough, it's a tough thing. It's a brutal thing. Some people get in a little too early. Probably said, "Whoa, I, I wasn't ready for this." Especially they fight someone like you to get in the ring for the first time. This was your debut, but he gets in the ring. I don't think he knew what was coming. I mean, this is a tough situation because some of these fighters don't even look like do. they're going to be knockout artists, and they are. Yeah, none of us do know what we're in for, you know. My first time taking, like, real damage was in the Quentin Henry fight. Um, you know, I believe you have clips from that. And I broke, <clears throat> excuse me, I broke both my orbital bones. And then top and bottom on this side, broke my nose. And then I split, I had to have 17 stitches, my lip right up to my nose. And, and they had to put the muscle back together. And now my lip hangs down. I lost all feeling in the left side of my face for trigeminal neuralgia the rest of my life. And right I, now? And, no, the rest of my life, I have no feeling from my eyelid down, all my teeth and everything completely numb. Yeah. You have no feeling right now? Zero. Oh, so, so this is something that, like, obviously, even when you win fights, you know, people are like, oh, I won. People that win come out and they're still in in bad shape a lot of times. It isn't like you come out just because you win all the time. You, you fight big time fighters. These guys are training like you. They want to be yeah. like you. Or better, yeah. they want to have a knockout. They're going in. Um, you know, how do you feel about your growth in BKFC? Where BKFC's going? Um, I, and I pulled this clip that the people can watch. How do you feel about where you're going and what BKFC is doing? I'm excited, man. You know, like I said, we need a home too. And guys like us, this fight right here, every bone in my face was just about broken, you know. Um, for a lot of us, you know, if, for me, it's it's this is like life or death when I walk out there and that killer kill killer be killed mentality that couldn't be more true. And so, you know, a lot of us, why you find we're so humble is because we're getting to experience these moments that that's as close to death as, as you can get. And then be able to walk wow. away from that, go back to our families, that our gratitude for everything else in life after something like this. I mean, it's, you're grateful for everything because and because this is we're walking through the flames right here you know there's no fear you know that we're not facing you know when you're on this level right there that was the most alive i've ever felt in my life wow that shot you see right there that was for the number one spot at 205 in the world the winner went on to fight lorenzo hunt and um when the doctor stopped it i had you know everything broken in my face but i put everything into that you know and and you this is like there's no exaggeration you have to be have a certain kind of relationship and understanding of your own with death and be and be able to accept like uh i might die tonight i might die in this ring you know and if you can't accept that you shouldn't be it you shouldn't be stepping in there you know but so when i do and it gets real i mean i couldn't uh, i'm feeling life at to the fullest i can uh, every sensory is every sensor is tingling i'm Dude, well, I you just said that, alive. I felt that. I got to yeah. tell you, since I came to the tunnel, you know, at my at, during my games of football, right, I went, I played college at Pitt, went to the pro level very quick, had some workouts, had a bad knee injury. I didn't get a chance to live that passion all the way out like I wanted to. I did the best I could. I uh, had a lot of support. Family, friends um, primarily were in my corner all the time. Um, yeah. But I just got that that feeling, that, that tingling feeling when you said that, like, 
when you come through there and you step in that cage, because it's one thing to be in the back getting taped up. It's one thing to be talking shit before the fight on social media. It's one thing to, and just to be chowing around and be like, I got a fight coming up. I signed with BKFC. There's another feeling that you get when you push that rope down, you step in, you go, this is, th this is the moment of truth. It's a gladiator. There's no tougher feeling because it's, it's, it's a fight, it's a war, and it's not pillow fighting, right? It's literally like gladiator. Truthfully. Yeah, we're not selling Bibles here. We're not dancing. It's every time, for for instance, Quentin Henry is one of the hardest hitters in BKFC in any division, heavyweight, light heavyweight, cruiser. He's he's known every time yeah, he gonna hits somebody. I'm going to have him come on here. He's going to come on the show. I, dude, I'm excited for you guys. But keep, keep, yeah. keep going. I'm going to pull that clip up while you're talking. Yeah, thank you. Every time he landed a punch on me, I remember it felt like uh, someone took a granite stone this big and threw it as hard as they could at my face. That literally the best way to describe it. Not that I've had that done, but that's what it, it felt like. And you're on, I'm live on TV. I don't have time or it's just not in me. I would lose sleep the rest of my life if I was to go, ah, you know, like oh. I eat it. I just, you see me right there. I don't even blink. And that broke bones. That one punch right there, I believe, was the final one that shattered the, my other orbital. But I just remember I how I process it is I feel it. I go, whoa, that's a lot of pain. And my turn, my turn, my turn. Oh. You know, and, uh, I, I love that because that right there to me, you know, when I see these clips, uh, you know, for especially from that fight, you know, that's one of my favorite fights. I didn't win that fight, but that was for the number one spot in the world. I'm a I'm a former street guy criminal uh, with a background that, that lived a whole different life, and I almost took my own life, and now I'm here today coaching kids. I mean, that's not an option anymore. No, it's a whole I, different. Yo, congrats to you, Chris. Congrats to you for that. That means a lot to people watching right now. A lot of BKFC guys come in, they talk, they want to hear your story. Tell us about that a little more. You're, so what? So tell us what happened. You said you're former criminal. You got into some 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 issues. What happened? Yeah, I was, uh, I used to rob drug dealers in this town, you know, and I was, I wasn't, uh, not that I was a bad person, but I ran with the wrong crowd uh, all through middle school, high school, and then after high school and started racking up a record, you know, and did a little time here and there. And, and I just, I uh, couldn't seem to get out of trouble's way or trouble found me, you know, everywhere, everywhere I turned. And then I found my first fighting gym, Team Irish up here, you know, MMA gym up here in Bangor. And the coach, Marcus Davis and Garth Crane, same as me, they came from that background. So I could finally relate. I'm in a gym full of all these other guys that we were, all, you know, we could all relate. We're from yeah. a similar path, background. It's a rough, rough way to make, a, you know, to survive up here. It's not an easy place to live up here. We're right on the border, you know, a lot of drugs, a lot of, you know, violence, believe it or not, really? in this area. Yeah, just in this area, just because, just for whatever reason, it's the most densely populated, you know, um, area for opiate addiction. You get a lot of garbage like that. In Maine? So, yeah, where I'm at, wow, by the border. I can tell you, I never heard that in my life. So that's interesting to hear. Um, yeah. Wow. And so. Yeah. And so coming from that world, um, the second I found fighting, you know, around 18 years old, and I didn't get out of trouble for the first couple of years after finding fighting and training. But I learned, okay, there is something out there that I that fits me and it keeps me out of trouble. When I have a fight. I call a coach, hey, do I have a fight? You know, yeah, I get your ass in the gym and they give me a date. Then, then I'm good because I will not show up to a fight, anything but top tier, you know, in best shape of my life. And every promoter anyone I've ever fought for knows that. And so it was the only thing that kept me out of trouble. And then pretty much, I mean, it, w it wasn't until I signed my first pro contract, you know, and that was a, the, a week after my first pro contract was the last time I laid hands on someone that wasn't sanctioned. And uh, I learned real quick, hey, you're about to throw your fucking career, excuse my language, about oh, to yeah. throw everything away, you know, and I had to do some quick learning. You know, I have my son, and I have students, I have people, I have responsibilities, and I have, um, you know, people that look up to me all over the world now. And what I do does matter, you know, and the the decisions I make really matter, and that, and that means something that's, that's important to me today. And uh, it weighs on me, and it keeps a steady pressure to continue. You know, I'm a professional. I have to conduct myself that way. So, tell me, yeah, tell BKFC. me about, tell me about your son. How, how old is your son? You have just have one kid. I have one boy, 12 years. He just turned 12 a couple of days ago. Kanan Sorrow, Kanan Riker. Awesome. Yeah. Tell us, congratulations to that. Tell us about your son. What that means to you. 
especially yeah. when you're fighting, right? I know, uh, and I said this, another fighter, parents, family, sometimes can't watch the fights. They're like, oh yeah. God, like you can watch other fights but when your kid fights, not watching. Tell right. us about your family dynamic of you fighting, right? Obviously they're praying for you, they're rooting for you, you're right. a warrior. This is, this is the guy who's holding the house together, right? Tell us how they feel with you fighting. Uh, I've been blessed to have amazing support from from my family, everyone in it. You can hear that clip of me uh, hitting John McAllister the, in the eye of that shot. You hear a lady screaming, that's my mother ringside. She demanded that they let her, she crossed over the barrier, no VIP pass. Wow, good. Uh, I forget, uh, one of the officials from BKFC just put the necklace on her. You hear her, when I knock him down, you hear Christopher. She's screaming, my mom, my dad, or my, you know, I, all my fights since the amateurs right there. They're in the hospital every time by my side. God bless them for what I, I put them through. Um, yeah. And they're right but there. They know that this is my passion and they know this is what I love. And, uh, and so, yeah, no, it's, it's amazing to have that support because a lot of these fighters, I know specifically, they don't have the support of their family. They're going, you know, they, it's just, that is they so, that is, you know what, Chris, to me, so I went to the fight here in Miami. I had a media pass. Yeah. Thanks to Chris Lytle hooked me up with that. I got a chance to meet all the guys, uh, David Cranson. I actually, oh, and also shout out. We also have a new tattoo sponsor, um, Inkaholic. Um, if you yeah, haven't met them, do you know Inkaholic? You know Gabriel? Yeah, I heard of them, yeah. Awesome. So I'll make that connection. If you need more, you come down and get some tattoos, Inkaholic. Yeah, 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 um, they're one of our major sponsors. Yeah, yeah I see that. Yeah. So uh, shout out to them. They'll see this. I appreciate that. I'm going to put some links in the bio descriptions. Um, shout out to them based on Miami, Inkaholic. But I will say this. A lot of guys that are coming here that are watching you. And good morning to everybody. And I'll make sure I go through everybody's name as we come on here. Brenda Howard. Um, Brittany, my eyes are bad. The house. Security is in here in the house. Jared Rivera fighting with my cousins is now about to go pro. He's watching you. Probably will get some stuff on here um, to go through and scroll down. Let me see what's in here. Monica, fighter from Utah, was here fighting in Miami. She's checking you out. Let me see. Tracy, um, Laura Flowers, my mom is in here checking it out. A lot of cool people. I'm trying to go through. Make sure I don't miss anybody because my eyes are Hello. a little crazy. Um, let me see. Simba Flax, I'm just trying to name everybody as soon as I can. Um, they're all saying good morning to you. They're excited to watch you. Uh, make sure you follow Chris Sorrow. Obviously, uh, Golden Gloves Boxer on Instagram. So, Chris, yeah. what was exciting about what you just said? Some people don't have families to support them on this journey. Like, literally, like, I, I saw a guy in Miami, Chris. I'm literally at the fight. Someone else just came in here. Rob Perez, good morning to you. Everyone else is coming hey, in. Good morning, going good morning on, to all of you. Um, listen, I, I saw a fighter get off a bus with a book bag, walked yeah. off in his sandals, and I'm like, he walked past, and some of them look like fighters, and some of them don't. And some of them that don't are really good fighters, right? Like, like that guy's the way that guy's fighting. First round knockout. It's like, oh, that guy was good, right? So no family. I didn't see any friends, and maybe somebody showed up to watch, maybe not. With a book bag and some sandals and socks and showing up going, and you can see some of its debut, and they're looking around going, Holy shit, this is a little bit more than I thought. And and Chris, your family supports you. They're there for you. They watch you. They're yelling for you. Christopher, would you knock a guy out? Whatever. That's got to feel so good, right? Like, I had that my whole life, too. That feels so good with that support, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It's it's beautiful, especially with the hell I put them through in my younger years, you know, in my youth and all the trouble I got in. Man, you can't you can't describe it no words to describe the feeling of uh being able to make your parents proud after years of uh putting them through you know hell and disappointment um it, it came full circle you know so i know it's hard for them to see me make that walk out there but they know because i'm their son that this is what i was made to do you know they, they since birth they know that the, i was put on this earth for battle and there's nothing that they can do to change that that's how i'm made up so i can't imagine what it's like to i couldn't imagine watching my son out there doing this oh this my is why god I'm doing can you imagine this. no can i'm doing imagine? this all for my boy here this is so he doesn't have to fight uh everything that i've sacrificed and done is so my son doesn't have to fight he you know i had to sacrifice the time and the years put into this it takes away from time with him 
you know, but now we're back home and we, this is all the dream right here. It's sitting right behind me. The whole, anything I want for my fight career, it's sitting right behind me right now. So I'm like, I couldn't be more happy and grateful. I have two questions for you, Chris. I think are important yeah. before I let you go. I appreciate you coming on here. Um, and I'm going to yeah. share a lot of stuff with this social media. What, what do you have to say to uh, the BKFC fans, MMA fans, fighting fans? Some people on here, I'm sure they'll start following you, subscribing to you, watching you, jumping on watching you. And as we grow and continue to build our platform, um, we, we're building more with BKFC. We're talking to them, celebrity boxing, talking to them, hoping to work out a good deal, media stuff, growing. What do you have to say to BKFC fans and the people with BKFC about you, like what you're going to bring to the table? Just what do you have to say to them? Uh, thank you. Thank you. I, the amount of love and support that I've gotten worldwide, all my fans, everywhere from here to to Leo in Indonesia. What's up, Leo? Everyone, they, they, they're they my fuel, the good and the bad. It's all my fuel. I prefer the good fuel, but it's all my fuel. They There's so many days, man, I tell you, so many days that I wake up and I don't want to do this. It's just, it's human nature. I'm broken, I'm in pain, I'm something. All I gotta do is open up my inbox, get an inspiring message. They're wow. stacked with them. And I am fucking up, putting my shoes on, out the door, because it's not about me anymore, you know? And uh, I, I have fought my way into creating this platform of followers and love worldwide. And it's my duty until until I know the time's up and not even close. My flame is burning hot. We got the biggest fight of my career coming up. It's my duty to go out there and fucking let them fly and get and 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 have everyone feel it in their chest, everyone that's excited, because they're they are my fuel. They're the reason why I'm showing up in shape, ready to throw down. You know, it, it, it's it's thank you. Thank you. You got to a big time fight coming up. We can't announce yeah. the the name of the person. Um, the yeah. fight is coming up. You have the date for the fight? May 11th, Mohegan Sun. Finally, in my backyard. I've always fought in everyone else's backyard. Miami, Alabama, Mississippi. And finally, I get to fight like, in front of my people. That's got to feel it's good, right? Be, it's going to be and, a fight. Listen, we're going to be watching that fight. I'm going to be there. Um, Chris, before you go, a uh, sense of topic, but what do you have to say to your brother who's watching you, I'm sure? Uh, if you guys just joined us right now, he lost his brother at a, a younger age and um, obviously years back, but something that helped you get to where you are, the motivation, your family support, but your brother was your right-hand man, um, warrior. I know when you go out there, he's with you. What do you have to say to him? I know it's a little emotional, but what, what do you have to say to him about what he's getting in someone who's here living for him? Yeah. Um, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I, mm. I, I know that's a, t a tough subject. Yeah, no, um, it's good. Uh, no, no, I, I, just, uh, thank I, I know you it's tough for, for you. But, uh, everything, um, because all the shit that we went through, I mean, I, I, I ran into a building with 14 people, pick piled on top of him, him once and put six of them out just to save his life. I mean, like we've been there through the, through the thick in the thin. Um, thank you for, uh, you know, uh, saving my life all the times that you did and encouraged me because here we are. Every time I, I talk with him every day, every time I walk out to that ring, you see me like, looks like I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to him and I'm just asking, give me that power. That he had he had this amazing knockout power. He's a main state champ wrestler, undefeated. You know, wow. I, it, it, yeah, he was like Adonis. We never we never saw the, you know what happened happened. To, you know, we didn't picture it happening. Um, but I know he's by my side. And the amount of times that I know he's been by my side, you know, Jacob, thank you. And you know, I, I'm grateful for you. So yeah, I know I, he's. You know, that, that's such an incredible. I have I have uh, two boys, one away. I have a daughter. And that's as close, I have my mom, my dad, so close to me, my wife. My kids have taken over my life, right? So I would die for my family and my kids right now in the forefront, that's as close as I get to that. So I don't know how that would feel, but I know for a fact that when you go out there and you're, and you're going through war and you're going through this energy, win, lose, draw, the power that he's gonna bring to you, when you come through those ropes, and you have that that animal, that dog in you, whatever you want to call it back in the day, your growth, your genetic, your DNA, all of that will come out. But on top of that, your brother and your family are right there rocking with you. So you got to be excited. Um, I got to tell you that it's, it's been a pleasure 
uh, talking with you. Thanks it's for making me cry, Brandon. You know, that's, <laughs> and that's real feelings. That, that's what life's about. Right? That's, yeah, it is real. He deserves every tear. He deserves every fucking tear. And that's yeah. exactly, I think, when people get to that point where they can feel that yeah. energy and what they're doing, their passion, like when, when I was playing football the same way, coming through those tunnels, I, I worked so hard. And I know you work so hard. And for you, it's you and them. I had 10 of the guys on the field with me. So even though I had that feeling, that power, I, I wrestled as well as a kid. And so I know what it's like. It's you and them. And it's got, it's all you built up to go out there and win. So I'm just saying hats off to you. Excited to Thank have you on the show, Chris. Thank I you. will be watching your fights. I will be tuning in all your social media posts. Um, we will do a collaboration with you. And any, any sponsors that we get, I will definitely mention you awesome. um, and, and, and send your direction. I think it's well-deserved, well-earned. And you're doing a hell of a job for those kids up there. That Thank freaking you. ring is awesome. Um, yes. I, I look, we can see it there. We appreciate you. Um, Thank you. And during your fight, after your fight. Can I give a few shout-outs real quick? What's that? Can I give a few shout-outs real quick? Oh, 100%. Go ahead. Shoot them off. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to Hayabusa Fight Gear for being there for my last two camps and, and helping all my students in my gym. Uh, everyone's supporting Hayabusa in here. Best gear on the planet. Most durable gear ever. Um, shout out to the Kind Botanicals. You know, Roy, everyone over there, you know, for giving me a life, helping me um, uh, with a life outside of fighting so I can make a living support of myself, my family, uh, you know, make this gym possible. Uh, shout out to Dino Luzzi. Dino, I know you're probably watching. If you're not, I'm going to send this to you later. Got nothing but love for you, man. Thank you for everything. Um, and yes, and everyone else, all my support. You know, uh, I couldn't be more grateful for you guys. Like I said before, and I'll say it to the end, you guys are my fuel. You are my fuel. You are, get me up every day. You put fire under my ass to go out there and perform, put my life on the line. And May 11th, Mohegan Sun, BKFC 61, tune in because it's going down. And I, it's killer be killed, man. This guy's got fucking fight on his hands look chris we appreciate you thanks for having you on and we will be having you on again so thank you as you fight we'd love to bring you back on as our as our network grows everything you see all these people showing you so much love and support as that grows the fan base grows we would love to have you on a lot as someone who speaks about bkfc it's in your heart yeah. i can see it's in your blood um good luck to you um thank obviously you. we'll see you before that and after that but we'll see you soon and thanks again for coming on the show Hey, thank you, Brandon. Have a good day, guys. As you guys seen uh, that quick little interview there with Chris Sorrow, what an amazing guy, a guy that we got a chance to get to know a little bit, had some interesting background stories, right? A lot of these fighters, they come from some interesting backgrounds, some stuff good, some stuff bad, all that fuels up to get to their main event and to their fight and grow. Everyone has a different story. As you just saw, we are so grateful to have him on the show. We appreciate him so much. Let's move on to the next part of the show. We got a lot to talk about because P. Diddy's house was raided, obviously, Miami, L.A. We got a little bit to go into with that. Um, what is going on with Pete Diddy? Like, what are they raiding him for? What are they trying to find? What are they doing? We got pictures. We got clips. We got footage. But out there in L.A., they're raiding this house, looking for all kinds of things, pulling laptops and documents and all of that. And people are going, whoa, why are they going after Pete Diddy now? Like, what is the situation with sex trafficking and all kinds of craziness? Is this where they're starting to crack down. We keep hearing all these stories that people keep stepping out and stepping up and saying, hey, this is real. This is not real. And then people keep trying to cover things up and not, is this what's really going on? Like, is this really what's happening right now? This is down in Miami, uh, down our stomping grounds. One of his other houses here was raided as well. And it's like, they were arresting people, quote unquote, his kids being arrested, other people in the house being arrested but is p diddy at the forefront of this whole trafficking case right this would just be really bad obviously they were pacing around the airport and i'm not coming on here as a reporter or someone trying to be like some kind of analysis like i know everything that's going on I'm not on the scene i'm not watching him come out but i'm just saying this is world news this isn't a little small town deal like all your houses are being raided they're even looking into chicago and other places they got these army tanks driving around i mean this is footage this is global news so there's some serious things happening right like this isn't a normal situation it's not like hey you know p diddy we're going to go through and get a couple things and you're going to be good no this is going to be a major deal there's no reason to go in and if they did raid all this for no reason there's going to be some other massive lawsuits but miami la and now they're looking into other states and other houses 
what is the main reason behind this, right? Like army tanks, like, and or, or Jeeps or whatever you want to call it, massive army or, or, or FBI vehicles, if you want to call it, whatever it is. Um, I apologize if I said that wrong, but this is what's going on. So what is the big deal? What is the big question? Is P Diddy one of those guys where they're going to start aiming at going after to start bringing out reality of life of what's really going on behind closed doors with some of the elite people i don't know i'm not saying that hypothetically these are things that are happening but very interesting story not sure what will turn out there but we'll see the next couple days as it unfolds some of the evidence that they pull out moving on to the next topic with ryan garcia because he was even talking about that i got another message i'm looking at the the lower third here and the message ryan garcia uh offers women plastic surgery <laughs> like Ryan Garcia is, you know, announcing all kinds of stuff. He has a fight coming up, right? He's going out into the media. He's talking about all kinds of things and talking about Bohemia, all these things, and all the elite are causing all these problems. And he's now he's talking about P. Diddy going, whoa, uh, yeah, I told you. Like, these people are doing X, Y, Z, you know, kind of thing. But now, pull it up for us, Howard, behind here. Ryan Garcia is literally offering women, like, different types of plastic surgery, right? Like it says here. He shifted the spotlight with another startling revelation. On Twitter, he boldly declared, I'm giving out free BBLs and boob jobs. Hit me up. No weird stuff. Just out here supporting. No disrespect either. I respect all women. So it's like, okay, so Ryan Garcia now shifted from a lot of conversation, obviously talking about the media and a lot of bad things. Things happened with the elite and they took him somewhere and they showed him some things with children and all kind of stuff. And now he steps up and goes, hey, no disrespect. I'm willing to offer free BBLs to show support to women, free boob job, and all this kind of stuff. I'm just saying, um, he's got a big fight coming up, a big time fight coming up. And it's like next month, I would I would really focus on that. And I know that he is. He's training every day. He stepped up and said that. He's not out there not training. Um, but the just whole principal point is like, what is going on here? Like Ryan Garcia is stepping up, hopefully for all the right reasons. Very interesting enough. Uh, but yeah, it's his social media is blown up for all kinds of conversation here. NFL's making changes to tackling like every year. NFL's making changes. And here's what I want to say. I love the NFL. I appreciate them letting us talk about them the way that we do. We have had any issues and concerns as we grow and expand our network. We know we got to be careful and tread lightly with certain things that we say and do until we have certain rights and yada, yada, yada. But this is one thing I just don't agree with. Like they're making changes to how you can tackle. You can't now let me explain this correctly. It's like a lowering your body to an angle and making a tackle. It's so hard to do that, right? Like someone's coming at you full speed, trying to make you miss. Like, how do you expect NFL players to tackle people when they're going full speed? And you got to, okay, wait, hold on. Can't tackle like this. Can't like this. Can't put my head like this. Can't turn like this. I'm just saying, look, I love the NFL. It, the highlight of my life, to be honest with you, in sports, right? Getting up, growing up, playing high school, playing in college, getting to that level, being in those locker rooms, enjoying all those good times. But I'm just saying, they're coming at you full speed. I was a running back. If I'm running at you full speed, right? Like I'm 6'3", 240. I don't think you have a lot of time to be like, hold on a minute. Let me let me do this tackle the right possible way. No, you're not going to have that time because I'm running full speed at you. I'm trying to run you over or make you miss. So you got to do what you can do to get me on the ground. Like that's the re reality of it. And in the NFL now with these big time running backs, like I don't know how you can tackle Derrick Henry or Saquon Barkley or all these kind of guys when you got to think about, hey, how am I gonna make this tackle? Like, how am I gonna turn around and make this happen the best possible way? I just think that with the NFL making all these changes to tackling, it could potentially cause more injuries to the defense. I'm just saying, it's a little hard to make things happen. Love the NFL. I love what they do year in and out. We appreciate them. I just don't know if the tackling changes are gonna be great. Now, we have a little message here that we have pulled up. Soccer player traveling around saying that he was in tears. I'm going to pull it up right now for you to watch this clip. Loves soccer, loves traveling around XYZ. But then he gets to these events and he goes, look, there's yelling all these racist remarks and he breaks down. I'm going to pull this up so you guys can watch. Jogos com a cabeça centrada no no jogo para que para que eu possa fazer o melhor para minha equipe e às vezes nem sempre é é possível. Então eu tenho que me concentrar muito todos os dias. And he breaks down here in tears, explaining, just trying to play the game.
Like, it's 2024. Like, I mean, really, if you're chowing around state to state, country to country, playing big time sports, you really think that people have time for like racism? Like, we did, just don't. Like, you, you, you're traveling around, you're playing so hard, you're training so hard, you want to get on the field and do what you do, I'm getting paid a lot of money, putting on a show for the audience, all the fans. Like, you just don't have time to come into on the field and hear a bunch of hatred things, whether it's white, black, Spanish, whatever culture you are, it doesn't matter. I'm diverse, I'm mixed, so I show love to everybody, I don't really care. But the whole point is, people don't have time to show up and hear that fan base with racism remarks. It's 2024, like, people have to wake up and understand, look, we're in this together. Nobody nobody woke up and picked a color like, hey, I'm gonna be white today, I'm gonna be black today, I'm gonna be, you know, whatever today. Like, you didn't have a chance to select what you wanted. Like, this is who we are. People have to show love and support to people that are good people. If you're a good person, you get love and support. If you're a bad person, then get away from me. Like that, that's just life, right? We don't have to go into racist remarks and all this kind of craziness. It's just, it's absurd. It makes no sense. I don't know why anyone would even think about that. You're there to watch a game, especially these are great athletes out there. Just enjoy your ticket price. Get out there, sit there, eat your popcorn, slip your Slurpee, your, sorry, sip your Slurpee, not slip your Slurpee, <laughs> anyway, but get out there and enjoy it, right? Have a couple of drinks, enjoy the atmosphere and move forward. But today, we have our show quote of the day, and here it is. Make sure your worst enemy doesn't live between your own two ears. Okay? Look at this right now. If you're on for the first time, hit the like button, subscribe, and look at this message. Look at this quote. Make sure your worst enemy doesn't live between your own two ears. Right? Like, literally, you control your own destiny, and people get on here and talk and say, hey, you can do what you want to do. You can be what you want to be. I'm the first to tell you this. If you're not a super athlete, you're not going to be an NFL football player. You're not going to be a soccer star. You're not going to be an NBA basketball player. So be what you want to be. Look, I got some love in that and support. You can, you can do what you want to do. You can overcome obstacles. But I'm the first to tell you the truth, right? Like, if you're not that fast, you're probably not going to run track. So what? But you chase what you're good at, what you believe in, and what you enjoy, and you work hard at it. And the show quote of the day, again, is make sure your worst enemy doesn't live between your own two ears. Like, you control your own destiny, like, legit. Like you get up every single day. If you tell yourself right here, like, yo, uh, you know, this isn't going to be good. Like, this is going to be bad. Especially if you're a fighter, you step in the ring and you're like, okay, I got a fight coming up. Oh my God, this guy's tough. This is going to be hard. Guess what? That's not going to be a good day for you. Like, it's just not going to work out because it's tough enough already. Even when you're balls to the wall and you got it lined up and you're going crazy and you got it under control. It's even tough at that point. So if you get to the point where you're out there and you're telling yourself, look, you got this. Like you put the hard work in, you put the training in, you put all the effort in, right? Like you're supposed to be there. It's gonna work out for you. And anything that you do, if it's up your alley, like I said, if you're not a speedster, you're not gonna be a track star. But at the end of the day, if you're doing what your passion is and you're talented in that level and you give all your effort, you can overcome any obstacle and people are living legends of that. And I just gotta say, I appreciate all of you today we had a great live interview today on the show. Good morning to everybody that just came in here. Young Merck as well. I went through everybody that I believe that came in here. I appreciate all of you uh, this morning getting up rock with me. We're expanding our network, all sports, NFL, NBA, and we just added a lot of fighting in the last couple of weeks because we're showing love to BKFC, showing love out there to the UFC as we're expanding our conversation. Celebrity Boxing, just talked to Damon Feldman as well from Celebrity Boxing. David Feldman is in BKFC. We appreciate all love and support. And again, shout out to Inkaholic. One of our new sponsors, we really appreciate you um, doing great, great artwork down in Miami. So much love to all of you. I hope to see you guys first thing tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. We got more people to come on the show. It's going to be great. I'm excited. And today was an awesome story. Make today the hump day your part to get stronger and get through your week. If you can get through today, it's hump day. Hey, we're cruising into the weekend. It's going to be great. I look forward to seeing you, all of you, front and center tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on here live. Until next time.